Follow spotlights are designed to illuminate moving humans and objects. Although conventional follow spots give great results, they have a couple of big disadvantages. Because a human operator needs to be on the same place as the follow spot, the places where the spots can be placed around and above the stage are limited. The result is that either the operator has to sit in a hanging chair above the stage, or that the follow spots have to be placed behind the crowd, which results in a huge follow spot with a focal length over 1.5 meters. Another problem is that every spotlight needs to have its own operator, resulting in high personal costs. We decided to modernize the concept of follow spots by making a completely autonomous system. Computers can do the job more precise, quicker and cheaper. And that's why we developed SpotOn. SpotOn uses existing remotely controlled moving headlights, combined with a real-time localization network. The artist that needs to be illuminated wears a small belt pack with a sensor, which calculates the location on the stage. It does this by communicating with sensors around the stage. This location is then fed into our controller, which will calculate the angles, zoom and focus of all the moving heads that are above and or around the stage. Multiple functions of the moving heads can be controlled in the web client of the spot on server, or by using the hardware controller. This gives the light technician full control over the spotlights. Spot on can be used in a wide variety of settings, congresses, bars, big festivals and indoor concerts. Depending on the size of the stage, between 4 and 16 sensors will be needed. Any amount of moving heads can be used. So for the localization we use ultra wideband time of flight technology. The sensors we use for this uh, are the DWM1001 DEF from Decawave. Uh, we chose these sensors because they were the cheapest. Uh, we power the sensors using lithium ion batteries. And to keep everything together and protected we designed and printed our own uh, custom cases. Ultra wideband signals are low energy, short range signals. Uh, using ultra wideband, you can send more information in a smaller amount of time compared to uh, yeah, smaller band signals. Uh, the sensors have high precision clocks, uh, which are used to get a, a round trip time from the uh, tag for, to the anchor and back. There are four sensors around the stage and one sensor uh, on the artist, or in this case me. Uh, the sensors around the stage are called anchors and the sensor on me is called a tag. Uh, the tag determines its distance to all the anchors, which have known locations uh, that we measured. And based on this uh, information, it calculates its position. It does this three times and then averages uh, the result. Uh, and the total update rate is 10 Hz. Uh, this, uh, this location that the tag is on is then sent to the bridge, so we can use the information in our controller. So we chose ultra wideband technology over other technologies because it has several big advantages. Uh, the first one is that it is very precise. In our setup we managed to get an accuracy of uh, 30 centimeters, uh, in which the biggest error was in the vertical uh, um, axis. Another big advantage is that uh, interference from stage objects and uh, other artists and humans uh, is very minimal. Uh, you don't need a line of sight for the tag to um, get an accurate uh, ranging measurement from an anchor. Um, so that's also a big advantage. Uh, if the system was to be used in a commercial uh, setting, then probably more sensors would need to be added uh, to the stage to get an even robuster and more precise uh, result. The moving heads that we are currently using in our test setup are the German lighting products impression spot ones, uh, but our um, system would work with other moving heads as well. And maybe even better because these moving heads uh, tend to be quite slow in their movement. Um, the moving heads are controlled using a protocol called DMIX, which is a serial protocol that is the standard for um, stage lighting since the early 90s. Um, it works as following. It has 255 channels, which are 8-bit, uh, which control uh, all kinds of features from the um, stage lights. Uh, and in its moving head, for example, these features are position, dim, zoom, focus, color, and many more features that we are not using for our current setup. Okay. Uh, when the position data comes in in our controller, it is then filtered and passed on to handlers for handling presets and pre-programmed animations. Uh, after which it's then passed on to the individual spot controllers for the, each of the spots in, that's hanging in our truss. Uh, 
the spot controllers calculate per spot the pan, the tilt, the zoom, uh, and other features such as an autofocus system that we have implemented so that we can control the exact focus of the light beams at every single point in time. Okay, so this is our front end. As you can see, we have a representation of the current setup uh, with the four spots hanging in the corners, the tag in the middle, and the current location of the light coming from the spots. Uh, within the front end, we also have a control panel. Uh, within this control panel, we have a focus slider. Uh, we also have a size slider. There's also another slider for the dim. And the last slider we have is for the color temperature. Besides these four sliders, we also have a huge color picker which can be used to set the color created by the four spots. Um, and besides this useful control panel, we also have some pre-programmed presets uh, which can be used to instantaneously set a couple of settings. So our controller runs on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and when the controller determines all its parameters that it wants to send to the moving heads, it sends this to the hardware controller. The hardware controller is an uh, old high school project of mine. Uh, we reused all the hardware because it was everything that we needed to control the moving heads and all the parameters. Um, it has an Arduino built in with a DMX shield to send uh, the data to the spots. And it has a lot of faders and buttons that we could use to control our controller. Um, so yeah, the Arduino receives the data from the Raspberry Pi over a serial protocol that we uh, designed. Uh, and it output, output it to the uh, spots directly. So our system currently has two significant limitations. Uh, the first one is the latency. Uh, the whole system currently has about a one second delay um, from where the person is and where the beams are. Um, and we uh, did some research where the delay uh, came from. Uh, and it uh, turned out there were three components in our system that uh, caused uh, some of this delay. The first one is the localization um, algorithm. Because we use the firmware that uh, came with the sensors uh, it does some filtering and stuff um, that causes a 0.4 second delay. The second delay is caused by our controller, uh, which in theory goes up to 0.2 seconds. And the third delay is uh, due to the inertia and the controllers in the moving heads, over which we have no control. Uh, these moving heads are quite heavy in the arms, so they uh, draw a lot of power when they start moving. Uh, when they... Um, finally start up with their movement, they're really quick, but with small movements, uh, they are also quite slow. Uh, and this also causes a 0.4 second delay. The second limitation that we have with our system currently is that it needs a lot of calibration, um, because everything is based on uh, exact coordinates and uh, math. Uh, the system needs to be calibrated really well in order to work. Once this is done, it works really well, but it just takes a lot of time to do all the measurements for all the positions of the sensors and the moving heads. Thank you for watching. This has been my presentation about hamsters. Thanks. So, Bart, what do you think of your life? I think my life is geweldig. Echt waar? Ik ga eventjes praten. Ik kan een verhaaltje wel nog. Het staat daar. Die is lang. Jeff. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.